Welcome to Science with Father, a YouTube channel dedicated to sharing science with you in a fun and interactive way. Enjoy! <laughs> It is because of surface tension that plants can take up water. With a little insight into surface tension, Dr. Smith and I did some pretty neat things, and you can too. Molecules that make up a liquid stick to one another through attractive forces, also called cohesive forces. In the bulk of the liquid, each molecule is pulled equally in every direction by its surrounding liquid molecules. This results in a net force of zero. However, molecules at the surface of a liquid do not have a net force of zero. They are generally being pulled inwards toward the bulk of the solution, and this creates a net inward force or tension. I don't get it. What is tension? Okay, check this out. Dr. Smith created tension in this rope by tying each end to a different table then pulling the tables apart until the scale read about 47 ounces. Let's check out the force present not only at both ends of the rope, but also at the middle of the rope and see what tension force the scales read. Each end of the rope reads about 47 ounces, but what about the middle? Will it read double the force? Nope, all the scales read the same. Tension is the same everywhere in a rope. The molecules on a liquid surface are not exactly aligned like a rope, but the molecules on a liquid surface are under tension. And as long as this tension between the surface molecules is not broken, objects that are even more dense than the liquid can remain on a liquid surface and not sink. For example, a needle is definitely more dense than water, and it can be really frustrating when attempting to get one to float on water. Unless you follow this trick. Dr. Smith has a glass of water, needle, scissors, and a sheet of toilet paper. He places the needle on the toilet paper and cuts out a rectangle slightly larger than the needle. He then folds up the sides of the paper over the needle, and he carefully places the paper holding the needle on the water's surface. In time, the paper sinks, leaving the needle floating on the water. Water does not flow in a stream from a dropper. Instead, drops are made. The tension created between molecules on a liquid surface causes all liquids to minimize their surface area. And the geometric shape with the smallest surface area is a sphere. However, the reason why these drops of water are not spherical is because gravity is pulling down on the drops. Dr. Smith is placing a mesh he obtained from the vegetable aisle at the grocery store over a glass bottle. He is folding the mesh because he wants the gaps between the mesh to be small. The mesh is then placed over the neck of a bottle of water and fixed in place with a rubber band. You do not have to fill the bottle all the way to the top, but Dr. Smith thinks this looks cooler if you do. He then places the palm of his hand over the opening of the bottle and inverts the bottle. When he slowly removes his hand, the water remains in the bottle. There must be a force that is greater than the weight of the water pushing up on the water. Do you know what that force is? 
The water is being held up in mid-air? It's a force from the air? Atmospheric pressure is greater than the weight of the water in the bottle. The water does not leak out of the small gaps in the mesh because the weight of the water is too small and not heavy enough to break through the surface tension of the water in the small gaps. Only when the bottle is tilted or shaken and the surface tension is broken will the water flow out of the small gaps in the mesh. The surface tension of pure water is very high and prevents bubbles from forming. However, the surface tension of water is lowered dramatically when soap is added, allowing the creation of bubbles. Dr. Smith is adding equal parts of dish soap and water to a container. To increase the lifetime of the bubbles, he is also adding a third ingredient, glycerin or light corn syrup. Floating bubbles in the air pop when the water in the thin film of the bubble evaporates. When a bubble touches a dry hand, it immediately pops. But when the hand is wet with water, bubbles can be caught. When a dry nail touches a bubble, the bubble immediately pops. But when a nail is first dipped into the bubble solution, it can actually pass through a bubble. That is because with a wet nail, the surface tension of the bubble is never broken. Do bubbles pop on all dry surfaces? Definitely not. Organic surfaces do not attract water, but repel water. If you can find a surface that is not only water repellent, but has very little surface area for a bubble to come into contact with, you can do some amazing things with bubbles. All of these gloves from Dr. Smith's closet are made of organic materials, so all are water repellent but which ones have very little surface area for a bubble to come into contact with. Cotton gloves have extremely small organic fibers coming from their surface and it is these very small water repellent fibers that will come into contact with a bubble. Such a cotton glove is going to create a very bouncy environment for bubbles. First, let's try the leather glove. And now, the cotton gloves. Don't get hurt, Dr. Smith. Water is a typical fluid in that the harder you try to stir it, the faster it stirs. However, non-Newtonian fluids are the exact opposite. The harder you try to stir a non-Newtonian fluid, the harder it is to stir. Dr. Smith is preparing a non-Newtonian fluid by mixing cornstarch and water. He places some cornstarch in a mixing container, 
and slowly adds water. He stops adding water when the mixture first begins to flow. He adds food coloring, making the fluid easier to see. It is a challenge to mix a non-Newtonian fluid because non-Newtonian fluids are extremely difficult, if not impossible, to stir. The reason why is that cornstarch consists of very large molecules, and the very small water molecules serve as a lubricant between the sticky starch molecules allowing the starch molecules to pass by each other and behave as a fluid. However, when a force is applied to this fluid, the water molecules are squeezed out of the gaps between the starch molecules. And this fluid no longer flows. Instead, it behaves like a solid. You cannot insert your finger into a non-Newtonian fluid by pushing down quickly. Instead, you have to push down slowly. You can even take a hammer to a non-Newtonian fluid and it will not enter the solution. Let's review. All liquids have a surface tension because the liquid molecules at the surface are not completely surrounded by other liquid molecules. And this creates a net force or tension between the surface molecules of the liquid. Soap lowers the surface tension of water, allowing bubbles to be created. Soap bubbles pop when the water in the thin film of the bubble evaporates or when a dry surface area evaporates or breaks through the surface tension of the bubble. The lifetime of a soap bubble suspended in the air is increased by slowing the evaporation of water in the thin film of the bubble. The lifetime of a soap bubble on a dry surface is increased by minimizing the surface area the bubble comes into contact with and using a water repellent surface like cotton. A non-Newtonian fluid acts more like a solid as more force is applied to it, and more like a liquid as less force is applied to it.